my eyes and see what kind of man I was because also a lawyer is going to be a problem. Whatever the problem is, you, you, you're going to be more of a problem because for some of us, it could be something happened in our house, you know, whether it was some, you know, whether incest, drugs, alcoholism, you know what I mean, bullyism. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the pressure of poverty, the pressure of holes in your sneakers, the pressure of changing pants with your brother when you go to school. You know what I mean? The pressure of, like in my house, it was welfare cheese, bro. And, 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 and I balled, we balled the bread, all right? The grits. Yeah, the grits for dinner. Yeah. Big pot. Right. You know what I mean? Real life, right? That pressure, you know, like Go said in his document, in the documentary, which I was happy that he said it out loud because he didn't even share that with us. He said, you know, he was young. He may have been depressed, yo. Yeah, you know I remember I mean? that. And I was like, wow. Because you know, then I think about, I go back and I think about, you know, man, because man, we know 14 years old, we walking around Stapleton together. And at one moment, we thinking of, yo, do we throw a brick? Go to Canal Street and throw a brick <laughs> through the window and grab the gold chains? But yet that same individual will go to the store spend his last $2 and get a sandwich and give you half. Right. So, so the environment made us be who we are, right? Make people be who they yes. are. But yes. then when we face the system, though, the system is just looking at us as a name on a paper with a, yeah. with a number to a crime and a face that 10 other dudes was here last week with the same problem and the same thing. And so he's right. just thrown in. And then the lawyer's looking at it the same way. He's just looking at it like, oh, yeah, this is, uh, he's, uh, he's just another one. Right. I mean, when you, talk, when you talk about 3 million people, you know, locked up, as they say, and out of these 3 million, we, we were dominating the population, all our Latin brothers dominating our population. You know, one thing also about the Latin brothers, man, that I, I, I really feel sad for our Latin brothers, bro. I got to say this to you because, you know, Back east, I got a home in the woods, uh, you know, where, you know, I kind of, my little bat cave. But the nearest neighborhood to me is called Freehold. And sometimes I got to go to court for whatever reason, whether it's a traffic violation, whatever. And when I go in there, bro, and I see how they doing those Mexican brothers in there, bro, they, bro, first of all, they're hitting them with tickets they could never pay. So now you can't pay the tickets, so now they're going to take your car. Now you can't kick the, the car and you can't work and half of your and, and you might not have your right papers. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. They do. So whereas whereas we may have some some uh you know some you know it's still bad for us, but we may have a better chance because we got black brothers who study their lawyers. We got enough people of us who there's a you know, you, you could find a million of us that rose that rise above it, right? And with mm -hmm. them, the numbers that rise above it is gonna be less. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And then it, and it, that, that'll trickle down to even other communities. But I just want to say that that uh, the criminal justice system has been very injustice to a lot of its population, especially the black population. So when I had the chance to, to, you know, come out on the better side of that, my mother saw that. She saw that. She witnessed that. She just, you know, she just gave me that mother look, yo, like, yo, don't you ever, ever, mm. ever. And it, it pierced me right down in my soul. And right. I turned like a mother would do. Yeah, like a mother would do. And I took that mother advice, yo, and I just walked straight as I can. And she was right. Because in the Holy Bible it tells you for every negative action you do, we're gonna give you a negative action in return. But for every positive action, we're gonna multiply you by ten. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Now one thing I took away from the rule, uh that I learned from the rule, again, Raekwon gave me that tape. Um, Y'all had the yellow tapes. Then when uh, Cuban Links came out, they had a, pur it's a purple tape. You know, I've heard you talk about being inspired by the red tops and the blue tops. <laughs> and you talk to us about, you know what I'm saying, about how street hustling, street hustling informs a lot of us in the music business who come from these neighborhoods. And um, just what lessons you learn from being in that situation of necessity. Yeah, because look, at the end of the day, Right, I, I don't. I don't condone crime. I just wanted to say that first mm -hmm. and foremost. Right, right? You no, know, I teach my children to be law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. But when we are in a desperate situation, right, you're gonna mm -hmm. find a way to put food on your table. A lot of us are natural entrepreneurs. 
You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. if you go back, when we was in the pharmaceutical business, <laughs> right? It's, right. It's, it's basically pharmaceutical. Right. Right. And you see how you see with, with the cannabis, I just I just ordered some some weed tea. Yeah. I just I didn't realize you could order weed. I ordered a bunch of weed tea and some other shit. And I'm like, man, a lot of brothers is in jail for this for the same shit. Yeah, I was locked up for selling weed, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was locked up for that. And and it was a it was a chase down. So so when they so it's like they chased me, caught me. No, you run. Mm -hmm. That's a, some physical beat down there. You know what I mean? They went right. to please. I'm like, yo, I'm out of here. Run. Might have to might have to take my shirt off for this one. I was gone, yo. But they had they had the whole no perimeter blocked off. So they caught me on some, you know what I mean? Caught me by surprise. But point being made, at the end of the day, what was I doing? I was selling weed, right? Which is a pharmaceutical, you know what I mean? To a customer. And the, I was selling to people on Wall Street, bro. Okay, mm -hmm. white right. boys on Wall Street will come down for lunch, buy the weed, go back up and make deals. You know what I mean? And that was criminalized. So, right. but what I did learn, I learned to get up early in the morning, you know what I mean? To pack my product and to go and put my product where it belongs, to take my economics, to put a portion to the side, to put a portion to, to, to get more product, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to, to eventually bring in more people to help move the product, you know what I mean? So it's basically mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, you know what I mean? And it was right. all done for marijuana. Now, that same marijuana trade that I was doing in Wall Street, right, still exists. But the people who created it are not part of it anymore. Exactly right. You know what I mean? So, exactly right. And that's, it's, so that's the sad part about it, is that we create the entrepreneurship, you know what I mean? But we sometimes get it moved. But I learned a lot from dealing in the streets and, 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 and learning from, you know, just supposed to be straight with you, Tyler. I didn't just sell marijuana. I sold T-shirts, socks, apples, mm -hmm. oranges, okay? Right. When, when Staten Island was having Gucci suits, the Dapper Dan suits, I was the guy that was selling them. I had okay, some, you it was the Dapper Dan plug. Yeah, I had, I had a, okay. a plug with us, the Bass Brothers. Right. Okay. Because Dapper Dan was the father, but once he made it uptown, the other brothers uptown started figuring out how to do it. And I had Mel Kwan and Shabazz, and they had like the Shabazz brother clothing line. They was making, and Brother Barry, they was making uh, um, Gucci suits. I'll bring them to Staten Island, you know what I mean? Sell them off for a buck fifty, two hundred, whatever. Fur coats. No doubt. Whatever. I was doing all that. So it was just being an entrepreneur. No doubt. No doubt. Um, shout out to Beverly Bond. She just joined the room. Um, you know, so I started my career with her. Um, I want to thank you for giving me the track uh, Rocket Ships mm. uh, that you did on my album. Yeah. Shout out to Buster Rhymes. He's on that. Um, you know, um, talking about your work, you, you talk about you do film work, right? Um, you and Quentin Tarantino linked up, gave us some beautiful work. Uh, Y'all luminaries in the game. Um, you did a uh, then you did uh, the man with the iron fist with yeah, Eli yeah. Roth. I, I call Eli Roth the bear Jew. Yeah, yeah, the bear Jew. <laughs> <laughs> the bear Jew with the baseball bat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, oh, you had a uh, Dave, Dave Bautista in that in that movie. Yeah, he was known as a wrestler, but people wasn't really checking for him as an actor. You saw him early. Yeah, I, think. I saw him so, early. Talk to me about the, the process of, of working with Tarantino and Eli Roth and them, and and coming up with the concept of man with the iron fist. Well, I had a chance, you know, to um, meet Quentin when he was doing a promotion for a movie called Iron Monkey. I think his company had bought the American rights, him and the um, mm -hmm. Miramax. And they bought Donnie Yen over to help promote it. And it was a, mm -hmm. it was a, it was like a, a boy fest with me, Quentin, and Donnie Yen talking about movies. And me and Quentin ended up becoming friends uh, after that. And we would just watch Kung Fu movies together. You know, he was like, he had, you know, invite me to his crib. He would screen them. He had a movie theater in his crib, you know, so, you know what I mean? So we'd go watch films or, or Miramax would loan me the screening room. So I'd be like, yo, you ever seen this one? And we'd go, we just, and we became Kung Fu buddies. Uh, but okay. then he had wrote the script for Kill Bill and he, and he gave it to me early and I read it. And I was really impressed by, by the story, by the script and by his detail. And then I, mm -hmm. I just told him, you know, if you need me for any capacity to help out, I help out. And so he mm -hmm. said, all right, you know, we'll figure it out. He said, I'm going to be shooting in China. If you want to come, you know, you can pop in. And so I popped in. And right. when I saw him working, it struck me that he was doing visually 
what I was doing auto with audio. Mm. You know right. what I mean? And so I humbly asked him, could I be a student? You know what I mean? And he and he agreed, yes. And I basically okay. studied for six years with him. You know what I mean? And I got a composition yeah. notebook. I wrote all my notes. I write the angles down. He had some of the best people in the business working on the, you know, in front of the cameras and behind the cameras. And I was just spending a lot of time studying, right? So then I think it was around 2000, you know, about seven, 2009, 2010. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, I think, you know, am I ready to be a director and all that? And he just told me, yo, you need to write. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, you write songs, write. Like, right. like, don't look for somebody to give you a script and all that. Write your own. And so I went and I wrote The Man with the Iron Fist. Uh, okay. And it was okay. My first draft was okay. I brought it back, read it to him. Thought it was okay. Uh, at the same time, so during this period of time, me and Eli both was students. So I would run into Eli at his house oh. all the time. 